On August 30th, 2020, I had my first experience at Kentucky Kingdom while attending the first ever Keys to the Kingdom. I had heard about this event and at first thought just shrugged it off like it was something I wouldn't be able to go to. After all, I live in Kansas. That is quite a drive to Kentucky. But then I started to think about it. What if I planned a road trip and visited parks along the way? And so that is exactly what I did. But the road trip video is for a different day. Today I'm going to talk about my experience at Keys to the Kingdom. Before the event began, there were some great graphics that went out and lots of information about what to expect. At the event, they had a text system set up to tell you what was next and where it was. It all looked great and felt like a friend was texting you wanting to meet up. I bring this up because Keys to the Kingdom was very well thought through and the staff over at Kentucky Kingdom should be recognized for it. They have some of the best marketing I have ever seen. T4. So I arrived there in the morning with my sister and get screened. It was at this time that we were given wristbands, shirts if you ordered one, and tickets for entering certain events. The wristbands were the nice reusable rubber ones, not the paper ones that are impossible to take off without a sticker. It was awesome because those wristbands acted like a souvenir before the event really got going. It was also at this check-in time that my sister won a skip the line pass. First thing was breakfast, and here is what I have to say about the food. It was free, and it was good food. The extra price of the ticket seemed to be made up for by the food alone. Breakfast was donuts and bagels. This was the worst meal of the day, mainly because it was pretty basic. But still, it's free food, I'm not complaining. For lunch we got to build our own burgers which were huge and absolutely filling. Dinner was a nacho bar and my personal favorite meal. Like the burgers, the nachos were customized with toppings of your choice. Later that night they had cake desserts which were also really good. And throughout the day they had free soda to drink throughout the park regardless of whether you were attending Keys to the Kingdom or not. So then after breakfast was some extended ride time on Lightning Run and Kentucky Flyer. The park layout confused me at first because there was a road running right through the middle of the park. And as far as I know, there are only two ways to cross. There is a bridge, and then there is a crosswalk with a crossing guard. So we made our way over to Lightning Run, and I have to say that it surprised me with how great it actually was. Okay, so got off Lightning Run for the first time. Uh, that was good. We sat in the middle, so it wasn't as great as it could be. Um, I think the back row would definitely be better, but eh, whatever. We'll probably do it again later today, so we can try it then. We did get back on and got a back row ride. For such a small little coaster, that thing packs a punch. My favorite part of the ride was probably when it does the load of the ground turns just because it's not like the rest of the ride. I wasn't expecting that and it reminded me of Cheetah Hunt. After our ride on Lightning Run, we made our way over the bridge to Kentucky Flyer. Okay, just got off Kentucky Flyer for the first time. Um, it was fun. Given its size, it gives a lot of airtime, which is really awesome. I'm all for that. Uh, yeah, just a fun all around ride. I hope to do it again today because that was really fun. That is a short ride, but it does give some pretty decent airtime, especially considering its size. The only problem was that there were really long lines for both of the rides, since they were the only two open. Plus, there was only one hour of ERT before the general public came in, so we only got one ride on both during that time frame. Once the GP made their way in, we headed over to Roller Skater for a quick cred. Okay, just got off Roller Skater. Probably the best ride in the park. What do you think, Cameron? Um... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that thing. Mmm. Mmm. What a great Very coaster. Yellow. Yeah. After the amazing ride on roller skater, we got on Thunder Run. My initial thoughts weren't so great, but my thoughts did change later that day. Okay, so just got off Thunder Run. Um, bit of a rough ride, but there's some nice airtime. That was enjoyable. I would do it again. I remember really liking the airtime up towards the front. Following Thunder Run, we took a quick ride on T3, my first SLC, and I understand why people don't like those things. Okay, so first ride on T3, my first SLC, and that was shaky. I understand why people don't like it. Um, the ride layout isn't too bad if it weren't so shaky. Um, those restraints were actually pretty decent. They weren't over the shoulder. They were really lap bars, but man, those things came down tight, and then you have like these seat belts that are holding your shoulders in so it it did hurt my shoulders it was weird and janky later on in the day i went back for another ride this time i was in the back and it was jerky and painful it wasn't any better on a happier note 
After T3 was the YouTuber Q&A. I have to admit that it was nice to see some of the YouTubers that I watch in one spot. Also, we heard from the owner of Kentucky Kingdom, Ed Hart, and got to see some pretty awesome coaster artwork. I did buy a poster because one, it was cool, and two, the money went towards charities like Give Kids the World Village. Next, we made our way over to Storm Chaser to use our Skip the Line Pass. I did feel bad because we made some other enthusiasts wait for the back seat, but man, was that ride awesome. I plan to make a review of this ride at a later date, but I was blown away by how good it was. Okay, so just got off Storm Chaser. First time, um, great RMC. I was a big fan. That barrel roll drop is so much fun. Um, yeah, all the elements on this were really great. Um, I did notice that the pacing right near the end got slow, but that was right near the end. So other than that, it was phenomenal. I was a big fan. Also, my sister won a skip the line pass, so we got to cut to the front of the line, which was awesome. So, first time riding, no wait. That was great. I'm a big fan. This was the ride I rode the most, and here's my night ride thoughts. Okay, so it's very difficult to see, but I just got a night ride on Storm Chaser, and wow, I got front row. That's an amazing ride, especially at the in night when it's hauling. Like that was that was a great ride. I loved that. Um, I've only been on three RMCs so far, but I don't know how that ranks. It's, it's just a phenomenal ride. The next major event was a restricted ride area walkthrough. This was one of the coolest parts of the event. So we are here. We are actually backstage. This is restricted area. We are right in the middle of this coaster and it is awesome. Big fan of this ride, big fan of these views. It was so awesome to see the rides whiz by from perspectives that most people don't get to see. We were able to go in the middle of Thunder Run and underneath the zero G roll of Storm Chaser. Another restricted area that we got to go see was the maintenance shop where they had some blueprints laid out for T4, their supposed new Vekoma SLC, to duel with T3. To end the night out was a pool party that to my knowledge, no one actually went to. And extended ride time on Kentucky Flyer, T3, Thunder Run, and Storm Chaser. This was probably my favorite part of the event really getting to meet other enthusiasts and getting some late night rides on these amazing coasters. To me, this felt like the most freeing moment of the event because all of the scheduled events were done and we were free to do what we wanted without the lines of the GPs. So my overall thoughts on Keys to the Kingdom. Amazing. Regular admission to the park is $30. Keys to the Kingdom was $50. Extra $20 was worth it for the food alone, let alone all the other special things that we got to do. It was this event that made me plan the road trip and I have to say that it was well worth it. Should you get the chance to go next year, absolutely take it. I didn't regret a cent of what I spent on those tickets. I can almost guarantee it that I will be coming back next year unless 2021 has different plans like 2020. So, were you lucky enough to visit Keys to the Kingdom? What were your thoughts? Or if you've never been, what are you most looking forward to? Leave your answers in the comments, and I would really appreciate a like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And before I go, I just wanted to mention at Coaster Girl with two L's on Instagram and her interaction with Chad from Ohio Valley Coasters. I just ask that we would keep her in our thoughts and prayers. And thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. God bless.